Mrs. Holder coming at you from the science lab. Today I'm going to catch the fish, if there are any, we're going to have to take a close look here, and then I'm going to head out to Shadow Cliffs to release our fish. So let's take a look. So the first step is that we need to have a place to put the fish, and I'm going to put the fish in here. But obviously I can't just fill it up with water from the sink because remember the whole thing is that I have to have the special spring water. So I'm actually just going to dip it in here because, as you know, I can't go to the store and buy spring water right now. So I'll just get some water and that'll just have to be fine. There we go. Now, the fun part is, how do you catch some fish? Well, first thing I'm going to do is turn off the pump and all of the other water and everything coming into the tank to make it a little bit easier. Then I'm actually going to start siphoning out some water. If I lower the level of the water, the fish will obviously have less space to move around, which makes it a little bit easier to catch them. So let me do that. Did you hear that? It's silence. It hasn't been silent like this in the science lab for what, a month and a half? So I'm just going to start by removing some of these bigger rocks. And remember, this is where I found all those little 11 the other day, the little guys that were still hanging out in the gravel. So there might be some, as soon as I move that, there might be some that start swimming around. Oop, there's one guy who's saying, please, I don't want to go. I'm not ready. I want to get back in my gravel. Well, sorry, buddy, but it's time. You can't make that decision. I'm making it for you. After I just took out the big rocks is now I'm going to siphon out some of the water. So this thing here is actually supposed to be a vacuum where you can actually vacuum up all the debris and stuff that would be in the rocks. If this was a fish tank that I was keeping set up for a long time, I would need to do that. But what I'm going to do first is fill this up with water. Then when I drop down one end of this, as long as I keep this in the water, it's going to just simply allow the water to be pushed out. It's actually air pressure that's pushing in the tank, pushing the water down and out the tube. So here's how that works. I just need to put this whole thing in here and fill it up with water. And I have to keep kind of moving around this tube until all the air bubbles come out because if there's still an air bubble, like right now I can still see there's a bunch of air bubbles, then there's not a continuous column of water. So what I'm doing here is lifting it up and here comes an air bubble. Here's another air bubble. Here's an air bubble right here. So I'm just waiting until all these air bubbles get to the top. Come on, come on. There we go. And then I can lower it back down, release my finger here once it's in the water. So now all of that air can be replaced by water. Once the air comes out, the water can go in. And let me do a check again and see if we're good. And so I'm just going to put this in a place where I think there's no fish and do a check. Looks like we're still good. Drop this in down into my bucket and stay and go. And it's working. It's working. So there's no pump involved. This is just air pressure that's pushing on the water up here in the tank. And because this is lower, the water is coming out. Let me do this. Make sure that part stays. I'll hold it. So the bucket's almost full. So I need to stop the water from flowing. So here's one way I can do that. I'll just simply lift up the tube. And then, voila. Once air goes in, it stops the water from flowing. So now, the fun part, or the frustrating part, depends on how you look at things. So I'm gonna try to wrangle these fish, try to get them into the tank here, but I might have to do some other things. I might have to end up taking out more gravel. I might have to take out more water. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs>
box over to the other side of the tank because there's still a couple of fish hanging out way over there off the edge of the camera. So I'm gonna move the rocks over so that way I can then do it. Oh look! And meanwhile, we have caught fish number 14. So we caught 23 fish, which is pretty amazing because like I have been saying all along, it always gets to the point where I figure that they're all dead, they're all gone. And I seriously only saw like maybe seven in there at the same time. So I am pretty stoked that we have almost half of the eggs survived because we started with 50 eggs. So this is pretty cool. All right, next stop, Shadow Cliffs Regional Park. Hi kids, I just got here to Shadow Cliffs and I'm right here at the beach area. And that's where I was planning to release the trout. However, we do need to look very closely at where the best place would be because if you know something about trout habitat, you know that they don't really hang out in a flat sandy area. Okay, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> so rather than worrying about the airplanes flying overhead in the wind at Shadow Cliffs, I decided to just do a little voiceover here from home. At any rate, as I was looking around the beach area there at Shadow Cliffs, I was thinking this looks nothing like a trout's habitat, right? I'm sure you remember what that looks like. So I wasn't seeing rocks, I wasn't seeing shade, I wasn't seeing a place for the fish to hide until I looked over on the far left. And over there, there's some reeds, some cattails, some different kinds of plants and rocks and the edge of the bank over there. We're definitely going to provide the trout some places to hide. Meanwhile, I looked down at the water's edge and I noticed there were a couple of Canada geese and a mallard duck. So I went down to have a little chat. So before I head over to the edge of the lake, I just wanted to point out that I did ask everybody to send some names of some fish if you wanted to name your fish because if you were there in person, I would definitely give you a chance to name your fish and give them a pep talk and things like that. But there were some kids who sent me a note about it, but it was after I filmed the video you're about to watch. Therefore, I wanted to give a shout out to a couple kids that I did get your notes. So. Landon, yes, I would have named one of the fish Master had I got your notes sooner. And Samar, I love the name JR. I definitely would have named a fish JR. But I'm sorry, Landon and Samar, I just wasn't able to do that in time. But a couple of you will see in just a minute that I did name your fish the names that you sent. So pick out which fish it is from this video here, and you can name the fish yourself. And for the rest of you who didn't send in a name, well, take a look, and what do they look like to you? Carry on. So I found a good place to go. There was this little beach with a little bit of reeds on the edge and a Doritos bag. Hmm, that doesn't really look like it belongs here, does it? 
I'll take care of that in a minute. So first step is we'll get some water into the cup and then now it's time to catch the fish. Hopefully it won't be as hard as it was to catch him back at school. And let's see, come here buddy, you look good. And voila. So if you were here, I would then give you and your friends or whoever came with you this cup and then you could be doing this next part. First thing I suggest that people do is that they name their fish. And remember, there's two names you can't use. Number one, Nemo. Number two, Bob. But any other name is good. So you can name your fish and then you need to give it some tips because remember this fish has only been living in our science lab fish tank all of its life. So you need to tell it some things like, hey fish, you see those birds over there? You probably want to stay away from them. So you do not want to head right straight for those birds because they will probably eat you. Instead, what you want to do is you want to hide perhaps along the roots of these cattails that are growing right here along the edge. Do you understand? Nod your head if you understand. You nodded. You nodded. Awesome. Okay, so he understands. So now we're ready. So what should I do? Just like stand up here and pour? No, of course not. That's a terrible idea. So instead, I'm going to get a little bit closer. In fact, over here where the Dorito bag was. And I'm going to lower my cup down into the water and let a little bit of water from the lake in, let a little bit of water from the cup out, and voila, there we go. No, don't go that way. No, go out that way. Okay, good. All right, he should be fine. I have two special fish that I want to release separately. And then I think I'll just release the rest of them all at once. But first, for Aditya, I need to get this fish. I'm sure this is the one that he would have picked if he was here. And this fish is called Swift. So Deetja, that's your fish, Swift. Set him right there. And then I need to get the fish for Nishka. And Nishka wants to name her fish. Ooh, wait, that's not him. Uh, and this is the guy that when we were at school still, this is the guy, see how fast he's swimming? This is the one that was looking at himself in the side of the fish tank. And she wants to call him Frisky for obvious reasons. So, We've got fish, uh, frisky and swift. So, were you guys listening when I was talking to the other fish about the, um, the birds over there? So, same thing, same drill. Stay away, hide, be good, be free, have a great life. Bye. So, Mishka and Aditya, there go your fish. Okay, and so, Nishka and Aditya, there goes swift and frisky. Goodbye! Look, there's one of them right there. Right there. Oh, I can almost touch him. Go! Swim! Go! Hide! Okay, look, he found a little root or something to hide under already. Good. All right. All right, so I'm hoping that the rest of you were listening to the different lectures that I've given so far about fish safety and fish survival. So hopefully you guys are going to be fine and have a happy, happy life. And there you go. I gave some of our gravel to the lake as well. So remember, the whole reason why we can release the fish here at Shadow Cliffs is because I have this, I have this permit from the state of California. Normally, you are not allowed to release any kind of an animal into any kind of a natural area, nor are you allowed to keep wild animals like the rainbow trout. You can't keep wild animals in your house or even in our classroom as a pet unless dun, 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 you have the permit. So please remember that this was a special situation. I don't want to come out here next week and see that everybody's let their dogs and cats and rabbits and things go out here. That's just not right. Take care, stay safe.
miss you. I hope to see you soon.